Bubbles, are you seeing this? I need to update my portfolio website ASAP so I have a shot at getting this job. What do you think? First thing I'm going to do is give myself a little bit more experience. Now I need to give myself some more skills. Let's get the list of programming languages. Place that right here. And now I have some skills. What do you think, Bubbles? I have a shot now. What's up, everyone? In this video, we're going to be coding up our very own personal portfolio website with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. Because you guys have been asking for the code to my personal portfolio website, justinstolpe.com, that is exactly what we're going to code. We have an about page, an education page, an experience page, and a portfolio page, along with this nice little sidebar over here with links to all your socials, your image, your name, and your job title. It is even responsive, so it looks good on mobile. Over in my blog code folder, my blog code repository, which is on GitHub, I'm going to create a new folder and call it Portfolio Website, then open that up. I'm going to begin by creating three files in here, the index.html, profile underscore CSS file, and my profile underscore JS file. We're going to begin over in our index file. Set up the basic HTML structure. You put your name in the title. Then we need to do some includes inside of our head under the title. First, we're going to start with some meta tags. Make sure it's UTF-8, set the viewport so that it looks good on mobile. Then I'm going to move on to our CSS. First, we're going to include our font awesome so we can get all those cool looking icons. Then we're going to include our Google fonts. We got a couple here. Then we want to include our own CSS file, which is our portfolio underscore CSS dot CSS. Last link is our fav icon. We need to hop back to our folder, create an images folder, and place our ICO image in there. Create an images folder, and in there I'm going to paste my fav icon. Now when we load our portfolio website, here's our fav icon, and our name, your name, is in the title. Lastly, inside of our head, we have to include some scripts. First one being jQuery, which we're getting right from the Google hosted libraries site. The next script is our very own personal portfolio JS script. Now before we get into the body, let's get some stuff set up in our CSS and JavaScript file. The first thing I'm going to code here is the body. Give it that Google font and a dark background and the color of the text is always white. Then we're going to set up a couple media queries. This one is for desktop and then the media query for our mobile. Anything less than a thousand pixels is considered mobile. Over in our JavaScript file, we're going to just do a document.ready with jQuery, and we'll come back to that later. Now let's start coding the body. Here is our structure for each of our web pages. We're going to have a main container. Inside of that main container, we're going to have a sidebar, which in desktop is on the left side, and a content container, which is all the content on the right side. And that's the part that scrolls up and down, and the sidebar always stays fixed on the left side of the top. In the case of mobile, the sidebar is toggled based on if you click on the little menu icon in the top right corner. Let's get some styles on our divs. In the case of the main container, we're only going to style this up on a desktop because we want to set it to always be a width of 1,000 pixels and a margin of zero auto. On mobile, it's just going to be width of 100%. A sidebar container, desktop or mobile, is going to be a position fixed. On desktop, we're going to give it a width of 190 pixels, float it to the left of the content container, and bump it down from the top 40 pixels. On mobile, we're going to give it padding of 10 pixels, keep it at the top of the screen, and give it a background. Next up is our content container. On desktop and on mobile, it's going to always have a background of white. Color and font size and font family are all the same. However, on desktop, we need to give it a few different styles because we want it on the right side, floating right of our sidebar. Set width, bump it down from the top, and leave some margin on the bottom as well. Only style we need on mobile is a margin top of 65 to bump it down from the header. Now let's dive into the sidebar. First thing here is our profile image, and it's always going to link to our index.html file. Here we have another image coming from our images folder, so I'm going to copy that over into the repository. There's our default profile picture. Here we have our class sidebar user image. Both desktop and mobile will have a border radius of 50, which means the picture will be a circle. On desktop, we're going to give it a height and width of 175 pixels with a margin left. On mobile, we're going to give it a smaller height and width and float it to the left side. Underneath our profile image, we have our user information. First thing we have here is going to be our name, your name, and then your job title. Only CSS we need for this is on mobile. Display inline block and put a margin left of 10 pixels on it. This will place the user info to the right of our profile picture on mobile in the header. 
and we have our sidebar username. We're going to give it a big font on desktop with a margin of top pushing it down from the profile picture. On mobile, we're going to give it a width of 140 pixels, a smaller font, and float it to the left. The last thing in our user sidebar info is our user position. User position on both desktop and mobile gets a little different color. We don't need any more styles on desktop, but on mobile, we need to set it to a width of 140 pixels, just like the username, and we're going to give it a font size of 12. Underneath our sidebar user info, we're going to define our mobile menu. Here is where our first instance of font awesome comes in. We're going to give it a FA FA dash bars, which is a little three bars hamburger icon looking thing, and this will only appear when it's mobile. In our desktop styles, we're going to display it none because we don't want to see it on desktop. However, on mobile, we're going to just do a display block, load it to the right so it's at the far right of the screen, give it a font size of 35 pixels and a cursor of pointer so when you hover over it, you see the little hand. After our mobile menu, we're going to display our sidebar social container. This is going to contain all of the social icons. And here, we're going to have a bunch of links. A tag here, it's going to open in a new window. This one is linked in, and we're using Font Awesome again. Start by defining our social icons. This is the same for desktop and for mobile. We have our A.social icon, then we need our hover. Then we're going to add our little hover grow class, which makes the icon grow bigger when you hover over it, and it goes back to normal when you hover off of it. We're going to place these hovers inside of our desktop CSS because there's no mouse on a mobile. Here's all of the transforms that you need to do in order to make it hover grow. The last thing is our sidebar nav container, which is going to contain the about link, the profile link, the education link, and so on in the bottom of the sidebar container. Over in our desktop CSS here, we're going to give it a width of 100% and a margin top of 30 pixels. As for mobile, we're going to give it a width of 100%. Display none on page load because it's only going to display if you click on that little menu icon. And then we're going to actually align all of those options to the center. Inside of our nav, we're going to create some links. Inside of our first div, we're going to have our about, which is actually this page, our index.html. These also are going to contain the hover grow class. We also want to add on a nav default. Then we just have to give it a heading. Let's define our nav default. Our nav default going to have a color and it's going to have a cursor pointer. And then we have our nav default hover. On desktop we're going to give it a font size of 10 and on mobile it's going to get a font size of 20. And that is going to do it for our sidebar. Refreshing our page you see we have our profile picture, our job title, our one lonely social icon, and our about. Checking this out in mobile. You see our icon is here. We have our name and our job title are to the right of our profile picture. We have our menu icon. Now we just have to add a click event for this so it actually opens up the menu and we need to hide the social media icons which we must have missed. And we did miss it. We need to add a display none on our sidebar social container here in our mobile styles. Refresh that on mobile. It looks good. Hopping over to our JavaScript file, here's where we're going to do the on click for our mobile menu. We added our on click for our mobile menu. It's going to toggle the sidebar nav container, meaning showing it or hiding it. Back to mobile here. If we click on it now, see we have our about. It needs to update our default A tag though to not have an underline under it. Back in our portfolio.css file, let's get a default style for all A tags and a default style for the A hover. There we go. With our sidebar complete, we can move on to our content container. I'm going to start out by giving it a content container inner class, and then we're going to give a title to our content container. Content container inner is going to have different paddings depending on if it's desktop, it's going to have 40 pixels, and if it's on mobile, it's going to have 20 pixels. Then we have our content title. In all cases, mobile and desktop, we're going to have the same color and the same font family. The differences are the font size and the margin on the bottom. Everything is bigger on desktop. After our about title, we want to use a few of our main accomplishments. We're going to call this our info circle container because it's going to have an info circle and then to the right of it, it's going to say your degree, your minor, whatever you want really. Mine is going to say my degree. Here we're using the font awesome info circle and we have to style up our info circle container. Info circle container is nice because it's going to be the same on desktop and on mobile. It's going to have a margin of top. And then we're also going to give the span, our icon inside of our info container, a little bit of margin on the right. Copy this as many times as you want to list as many things as you want. After that list is done, we're going to have a little blurb about us. This is also nice because it is the same on desktop and mobile. 
Underneath our about text, we're going to do another content title. We just have to copy our div up there and name this skills. Then we're going to list out all of our skills in the skills container. This is also the same on desktop and mobile, just display inline block. And inside of our skills container, we're going to have a unordered list skills dash ul is the class, same on desktop and mobile. Then we're going to style up the list item inside here. We're going to have a span and the name of the skill. Here we're using font awesome check mark, and then you can just list out your skill. And you can go crazy here listing out as many skills as you have. Now when we refresh our page, we have our content section. It's filled in with our about and our skills. We have our bullet points here, our major accomplishments, a little bit about us, our skills, and they all get a little check mark by them. And that is the about page. Before we move on to the education page, we are going to create a sidebar.html file, copy everything from our sidebar container and paste it in our sidebar HTML. This way we will be reusing this code and we only have one place to update the sidebar in case you want to add more. Put a little comment in here so we know where it's coming from. And we have to hop over to our JavaScript file where we're going to use jQuery to load the sidebar into our sidebar container. And all we have to do is call a load on that element. Then we're going to place our mobile menu on click in here as well because we need to run this after that HTML has been loaded. So our mobile click still works. Refreshing our page, our sidebar is still there so we know it's loading. The last thing we're gonna do in our JavaScript file is add the nav selected to the current page we are on. To do that, we're gonna get the file name index.html, education.html, whatever one you're currently on in the browser, which we do using JavaScript with document.location.href match on this regex here. Then, once the sidebar has loaded, we can go ahead and add our class. Call this nav selected. And we're adding our class to the a tag where the href is the current file name. We're in the index.html file. We're gonna be adding this nav selected to the a tag with the file name index.html, which happens to be our about. The style for our nav selected is simple, it's just a color of white. Now when we load our index.html page, our about is white, because it has the nav selected class. Now to create our education.html file, we're just going to copy our index and rename it education. In here, we're going to leave all this stuff the same, update this to be your name, education. Then we're going to update the content title, however, to education, and get rid of everything else below that. Now we're gonna focus on each of the places that we got our education at. Each of those we're going to call a highlight section. Inside each highlight section, we're gonna have the icon of the school on the left, and on the right, you're gonna have a little bit of text about what you did at that school, the years you went there, the degree you got, and so on. Inside of the highlight section, we're gonna create a highlight section inner class. Our highlight section and inner are going to be the same on both desktop and mobile. The first thing inside here is our image on the left, our highlight section icon. Inside of our icon, we're going to have a link around our image, which is the icon for the school. Place the link to the school here, and you would place the icon to the school here. Our highlight section icon on desktop looks like this. We're gonna float it to the left because we want it on the left of all the main content on the right. Then for the image, we're gonna make it 100 pixels wide, display it in line block, and give it a border radius of five pixels. On mobile, the highlight section icon will have a width of 100%, and the image will have a width of 50 pixels and a border radius of 5 pixels. Over in our images folder, we need to make sure we have an education icon. Then we need to add our little hover 360, which means when you hover over it with the cursor, the icon's gonna spin around, do a 360. This hover is again only on desktop because we only have a mouse on desktop. And there's our transitions for the hover 360 class. After our icon comes the content. Along with the content comes the content inner. Highlight section content gets its own color, its own font size, and its own font family, which are the same across mobile and desktop. However, on desktop, we need to float it to the left and give it a specific width. Also, content inner on desktop is going to get a padding left of 25 pixels. And on mobile, we're going to give it a width of 100%, because on mobile, the icon is just going to stack on top of everything else. The first thing inside of our content is our section title, which is the name of the school that you went to. And our title has its own color font font size and font family, which are also the same on desktop and mobile. After we have our school's name, we're going to put in the years that we were there, from when we started to when we graduated. And we're going to call this the subtitle text. This text will have a different color, a little smaller font, same font family, and a margin of top. We do want to add something onto this for mobile, though, so we're going to line our title and our subtitle in the center of the screen on mobile. And of course, you can have as many subtitles as you want. I'll add in one more here, subtitle, and we'll 
put in the website to the school. Last but not least, we're going to have some text. This is just going to be a few sentences about what you studied while you attended, blah, blah, blah. Highlight section text is going to be the same on desktop and mobile. It's got its own color, font size, a different font family, and a margin top. And that concludes our highlight section. Here's our first highlight section. Now we want a little divider between them. Obviously we've been to multiple schools, so we're going to call it highlight section separator. We have this a style of simple border bottom color and a margin top of 40 pixels. We can hop over to our sidebar HTML snippet and add on the education navigation. Refreshing our about page, you see there's our education. Now if we click on that, it should take us to our education HTML where you see all the schools we've attended, except we're missing our text and our separator. Now we have an extra div here, which is not helping anything. And let's add one more education highlight section below because we don't want the highlight separator after the very last one anyway. Refresh our education and that completes our education page. Now let's create our experience. Hopping back to our portfolio folder, let's copy our education and rename this experience. Change the title to be experience. And what we have to update here is we need to use an experience icon, which would be the icon of the place that you worked at. For this, I have an experience icon.png. Let's delete this second education out of here. In our images folder, we're going to add our experience icon right there. For the most part, a lot of the stuff is going to be the same. We're just going to replace the school name with the company name. The year started and the year ended. Website to the company. Update this text to just say a little bit about what you did and what your responsibilities were at the company. And that's it. Put a few of these in here. Add on our experience to our sidebar right under the education. Refresh our page. Now our experience has just popped up right here. Clicking on that, we see our experience. Oh, I see a mistake. We forgot to update the title. Let's do that quick. And our experience page is complete. Company icon, name, when you started, ended, website, and what you did while you were at the company. We're going to do the same for our portfolio. We'll get an uh, icon in here for our portfolio. Then we're going to copy our education and name it portfolio. Open that up and update the title. Update the content title. And here's where we replaced our image to be portfolio icon. And it's a PNG. Let's delete the second item here. Instead of the institutional name, we're going to do project name. Your start, your end, a link to the project. Update this little snippet to just be a few sentences about the project. Underneath this snippet, we're going to add some skills. Back in our about page, we're going to copy our skills div and paste it right here. That way we can list any skills that we used while working on that project. So we have one project. Let's copy this section and put it right below the divider. So we have a few projects in there. Add it to our sidebar and refresh our page. There's our portfolio. Clicking on it, there we go. We have a couple projects, the name, the start end, the website, a little snippet about what the project was about, and any skills you may have used while working on that project. The last thing we're going to add is our contact page. Copy over my index file and name it contact. Your name dash contact. Let's get this added to the sidebar. We're really just going to be using this, these info circles for each of our different social media platforms where you can be contacted on. For example, I'm going to replace this with the YouTube icon. Say subscribe on. And I'm going to create a link right here to my YouTube channel. And all we have to do is just do that a bunch of times with a few different links. We should have our contact page. Let's refresh our page. Contact is there. Click on contact. There we go. Obviously update the title. And our contact page is completed. Before we finish, let's just check this out on mobile. Make sure sure all things are looking good. There's our contact page on mobile. Check out our education, experience, and our portfolio. Looks good. And that is my personal portfolio website. Templated it out for you guys to use the codes on GitHub. Check it out, tweak it, modify it. But that's going to wrap this video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.